across the nation, there are hundreds of thousands of religious congregations. And as Lisa Desjardins reports, some of the biggest, known as megachurches, are facing challenges as the culture around organized religion changes. Woven into the U.S. political conversation is another discussion about religion and its role in the country. A rising force has been megachurches, Christian congregations with 2,000 worshipers or more. While there are fewer than 2,000 of those megachurches, a fraction of churches overall, they are so large that they draw nearly 7 million Americans on average. They grow even as Americans overall become less religious. Recently, though, megachurches have also been in the spotlight for the resignations of two high-profile pastors. To look at this more deeply, I'm joined by Scott Thumma, a professor of sociology of religion at Hartford International University. Scott, first of all, how much have megachurches grown, especially relative to other churches, since the pandemic? Well, uh, they certainly took a significant hit, probably even more so than other congregations during the pandemic. But... Uh, but they, they are very attractional and, and consequently uh, many people flock to them because they had all of the uh, amenities that people were looking for in a congregation. They had robust uh, Sunday school programs, youth programs, and exciting worship. And, and so consequently, they've drawn in a lot of folks when other churches haven't. Now, in terms of what we've heard about these two pastors, the two that we're talking about are Tony Evans, who said he committed a sin, but he didn't specify what that was as he resigned. The other is a pastor named Robert Morris. He's also someone who's worked with uh, former President Trump as an advisor to him. He admitted to sexually abusing a 12-year-old in the 1980s when he himself was in his 20s. Do mega churches have more issues and misconduct than others, or is it just that they're more high profile? Well, much of it has to do with uh, the high profile nature of these churches. Uh, they have a significant spotlight on them, and consequently, uh, any misconduct or misbehavior uh, gets amplified in some sense because of their platform. Mm -hmm. We don't have really good data on uh, congregations and the incidence of misconduct across all congregations. But certainly anything that happens uh, in a megachurch, even to one of the lower level staff or at someone's ministry, gets amplified because uh, they have such a high, high profile in, in our religious landscape for sure. And these megachurches are also mega businesses just by the nature of having so many people attend. What are the challenges and the benefits of dealing with dollars and also trying to deal with the divine? They really are a kind of corporation uh, scale. The average megachurch has well over $5 million of uh, annual budgets, and they might have upwards to 100 to 200 staff people. And it, it takes an exceptional team of people to, to run those but then also to remain a kind of spiritual reality. And those two don't always mix. Uh, consequently, uh, I think in, in recent years, we've seen a lot of megachurches uh, turn to organizations uh, like ECFA, uh, Evangelical uh, Financial Accountability Organization, and also putting into practice uh, rules and background checks and all, all of those kinds of things to, to really try to professionalize even more so than, than most small churches, for sure. I know from my experience with mega churches, they really can feel like small communities, small towns in it themselves. But can you talk about how they supervise what they do? They're not necessarily part of other denominations. They're kind of sort of their own independent uh, branch of Christianity, perhaps, some each one to itself. About 40% of mega churches are what we call non-denominational. They're not connected to uh, a national uh, denomination that's recognized as, as a religious entity. Uh, consequently, those 40% those really uh, are autonomous and, and they may have some network connections with other churches, but, but they, they really are uh, accountable only to themselves. But a lot of the megachurches, even if they are denominational, because they're so large, compared to the average congregation in the United States, which is about 60 people. It's uh, a difference between a David and a Goliath, right? <laughs> 
And that, that raises a, a lot of issues around accountability. If, if something happens, is, is the denomination going to come in and say, I'm sorry, you need to, you need to make some changes? Or, and, and if they're non-denominational, uh, who's, who's going to do that? The board of the church is oftentimes picked by the pastor of that church and is internal to the congregation. So that, that makes accountability pretty tough. As you mentioned, these churches have a lot of appeal. They especially um, have brought in often a more diverse crowd than we see, especially in other evangelical churches, younger crowds, lots of sort of passionate youth activity. Now that's in contrast to the fact, as I mentioned, that Americans overall seem to be shrinking away from organized religion. Why do you think there is that trend in America now? We've seen over the last few decades, actually, even before the rise of the non-affiliated uh, a, a kind of disconnecting from civic organizations. And that has compounded now with younger generations finding other things to do or finding other ways to be spiritual than belonging to a particular congregation. And with the average age of, of the attender rising in most churches and the negative publicity that a lot of congregations get because of uh, anti-LGBT or uh, women's issues or uh, other scandals that have happened. All, all of those things, I think, go against uh, younger generations finding them uh, a, a sufficient place to go and become spiritual. They, they would much rather find other ways, whether it be so, so, soul cycle or uh, going hiking in the woods or something. Hmm. Interesting. Scott Thelma, this is a fascinating area. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you.